Peter Wargamer here with a long overdue painting tutorial. That's right, I'm here to show you how to speed paint your sad tin men. This particular Iron Warrior was converted as part of my Five Ways to Convert series, so if you haven't done so already, I would recommend checking that out first, also just so I can bump up that ad revenue. In fact, if you have seen it, just go watch it again. Anyway, let's begin with how to speed paint Iron Warriors. Your first port of call when painting any miniature is to prime it. This is because a lot of the materials that models are made from are about as clingy as a wet bar of soap in a Vaseline factory. So we need a type of paint called primer, which is usually formulated in a way that allows it to fix itself against these otherwise difficult to paint surfaces. The primer then allows our subsequent layers of paint to cover properly. However, being the unsung hero that it is, Primers not only allow us to actually apply our paint, but they also give us the opportunity to start adding color straight away. By using a black primer, like the one I've used here, it will sit in all those crevices and hard to reach places and will simply look like shadows when we inevitably miss those areas. Basically, primers got your back. Primers come in many forms, airbrush, aerosol, and brush on, and what you use is really up to you and what you have available at the time. I've personally gone for an airbrush primer here. So now we have a model that is ready to accept paint, but this is speed painting, so we gotta go fast. And a few methods are faster than dry brushing. Dry brushing involves taking some paint, that was unexpected, wasn't it? And then dipping our brush into it before dragging it over a piece of tissue or some paper. Apart from looking like your six-year-old self's method of painting, what we're doing here is working that paint through the bristles whilst also removing the excess. This means that when we bring in our miniature and start to quickly but lightly drag that brush over it, the paint is applied in a thin layer over a larger area very quickly indeed. The technique we're using here will also help to avoid the recesses, meaning the result is some instant shading being created without the need for washes. As an extra bonus, this magical technique will also give our armor a rough metal texture. You can easily cover the entire model in just a few seconds, meaning a whole squad can be base coated in a matter of minutes. Just make sure you clean out your brushes and water after the step as you don't want those metal flakes getting into your other non-metallic paints. Next up, we have one of the cheatiest paints out there, contrast paints. Love them or hate them, you can't deny that they're often faster than using regular paints. Plus, they work great for metallics, and what do you know, our whole model is metallic. We're going to start things off with some pure Nasdrag yellow applied over all those metal trims. The result is an instant burnished gold that won't require multiple layers and can be applied very quickly indeed, which is great because Chaos Space Marines armor features more metal bands than Finland does. As much as Iron Warriors love metal, not everything of theirs is painted metal. I mean, it could be, maybe they're into body paint, who knows? But there is one non-metallic thing every Iron Warrior needs, and that is Hazard Stripes. For Hazard Stripes, we need yellow, so let's paint on some off-white instead. Here, we're using Wraith Bone over the panel that I want to apply the Hazard Stripes to. But before I put brush to model, I thinned out my paint with a little water first. This makes the paint flow much more easily and allows us to paint much more quickly. You can see that I'm not being super concerned about getting right up to the edges or completely covering the panel. This is just me being lazy. Well. Partly it is, and this is slightly less particular approach to painting. It will not only shave off precious time, but it also gives the model a much rougher appearance that works really well for Chaos Space Marines. We can also use this paint over the other areas of the model that aren't metallic, like any leather straps and pouches, as well as any exposed flesh. Unless you're going for that sat in a shot window for 10 years and almost faded to white look, you're probably going to want to get some yellow on that armor panel. Luckily for us, contrast paint once again comes in handy. Grab yourself some iron in yellow and apply this over any panels that you want to create hazard stripes on. To complete the hazard stripes, we are going to need to grab some Abaddon Black and thin it down in much the same way as we did the Wraith Bone earlier on. Using this paint, begin to paint a series of perpendicular lines diagonally across your armor surface. Once you are happy with their placement, you can then fill in the space between the two lines. Repeating this across the yellow areas will result in those iconic hazard stripes that are usually used to indicate that something shouldn't be stepped on, which is pretty ironic considering the Iron Warriors' history of ditch digging for the other legions. The final two steps will see us return to contrast paints with the first being Wildwood. This will do two jobs for the price of one by creating a rusting and dirted appearance to the armor whilst also creating the leather appearance on the pouches. 
When tackling the armor, you'll want to mix your wildwood with some water. This will make the mixture much runnier, essentially creating a highly pigmented wash. You can apply this mixture over the whole model, including any areas of exposed flesh. This will settle in a thin layer over the surfaces and more heavily around the recesses. The resulting appearance is one of an oily and grimy metal on the armor and a pallid, sickly skin tone on the face. For the leather areas, we instead want to use our contrast paint straight from the pot. This will allow us to create the appearance of a brown leather incredibly quickly and also easily. Last but not least, we have some Black Templar. However, instead of purging heretics, this Black Templar is going to help us to emphasize certain details and to create extra ones too. Begin by applying some Black Templar to those ridged areas between the armor, which will help to create a little more definition between the silver plates. If you have any areas on your model that look a little flat or bland, you can also paint this directly into recesses to boost the definition of some of those details too. Finally, it can be used to create some small oil streaks over the armor, enhancing that weathered look. Simply paint a small dot of contrast paint into a seam before using a moistened brush to pull the paint downwards. The resulting effect will look like oil has dripped down the armor, creating a stain. And so, all that's left to do is to give your Iron Warrior a suitable basing scheme and a coat of matte varnish to give the armor that dull, faded look. Overall, this miniature took around 20 minutes to paint, not including the priming and the finishing steps. This time could probably be brought down considerably if you were to forgo the hazard stripes and omit those extra details with the Black Templar. Additionally, batch painting a group of Iron Warriors could also vastly reduce that painting time. So, now that you're armed with this knowledge, you can go and churn out Iron Warriors, ready to be mulched in the meat grinder that they call Battle Tactics. Now, if you enjoyed this return to speed painting, do let me know in the comments below and leave me your suggestions for other legions you'd like to see me tackle in this way. I also want to say a huge thank you to the guys who support me on Patreon. Your continued patronage really does help me with the cost of producing these videos. If you'd like to lend me a hand, I've included my Patreon page in the description below where you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month. And for anyone looking to chat about all things wargaming with us who also enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server, which you can find a link to in the description. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.